Hi everyone, happy Friday again. Welcome back to Nalo's Thrift Talk. I'm Lola. And I'm Nay. And if you're new to the channel, we are a pretty much a weekly show that talks about reselling on eBay and um, Poshmark and a few other platforms and thrifting and how we can integrate thrifting into our daily life and make it more sustainable and living it on our own terms. Yes. And today, uh, sorry, <laughs> my technical difficulty. Okay. Um, so today is a continuation of our episode last week where we were talking about how we're dealing with the current pandemic and as resellers, sort of how it's affecting our lives and what we're worried about and, and how we're trying to address some of those anxieties. And so today we wanted to continue and talk a little bit more about how we as resellers can help since we're people who tend to have a lot of random things on hand that might actually be suddenly very useful in a pinch. And also how we can keep our stories going and the best practices for us as, you know, ethical people who don't want to take advantage of the situation, how we can still, you know, respectfully offer things that people are looking for. So that is what's in store for today. Yes. And before we get into that, we have, oh, so next week we'll be doing sort of a part three and we'll be talking about creative sourcing ideas, which is something that came up last week and we want to get into a little bit more. Um, this will probably be useful even after this pandemic is yeah. over, but of course right now we're all missing thrifting very much. I'm sure <laughs> I, know I can speak for myself. Yeah. Um, but there are still some creative ways uh, to, to get your, to get some inventory. If you, if you don't have a huge profit mountain, like in my case, <laughs> So, or if you find yourself getting through your profit mountain, mm -hmm. that's a good point too. Yes. Yeah. So that's next week. And now, Nadine, what are you wearing? Let's thrift it. Okay. So I am wearing a this. I love the it's the brand is Belladini. I don't know the brand. I've never heard that before. Yeah. But it is reversible, which I love. This this sweat. It's it's a reversible cardigan. The other side is white and black, and this yeah. is so. I, this is like, it's really cozy. It's kind of my go, one of my go-to cardigans. Mm -hmm. And then under it, I have this vintage Golden Girls tee. That's probably my favorite thrifted tee ever. That is so cute. Yeah, so that's my, and my big hoop earrings are also thrifted, so of course. I don't know where, I don't even remember. I think I paid $4.99 for the sweater at Goodwill. Uh, somebody actually thrifted this and gifted it to me, a friend did, so that was, it was like the most, the ultimate best t-shirt ever. I feel like if I found that, I would also think like, yeah. thank you. It's <laughs> totally, totally, totally. And it's like straight from the early nineties. So yeah, like the, the tag on the shirt, it's one of those um, like t-shirt, I forget what it, what it is. It's like Gildan or something, but it's yeah. like, you can tell that the tag is definitely vintage. It's like eight, late eighties, early nineties. I just, best t-shirt ever. Well, and the design too is super, super nineties. Yeah. Yeah, like so if, you were, if you were going to part with it, if you listen to Depop, it would like. Oh yeah, I would never part with this though. If those of you who don't know, I am a diehard Golden Girls fan. Like I could give you any. I, I would. I can get Golden Girls trivia. I can tell you like every episode. I'm like really a Golden Girls nerd. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm wearing one of my favorite vintage dresses that I've ever found. And this is a dress straight out of the 60s. It's super, super short. So cute. Like I definitely, if I was wearing this out of the house, probably put on some bicycle shorts underneath it. It's handmade and it has the best sort of sparkly trim at the cuffs and the neckline. And it's kind of thick, so it actually is something I wear usually in the winter, especially because then I can just put tights on, but I really wanted to get dressed up today, feel a little fancy. Yeah, it's, I think it's fun to do sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely good for my mental health, so. Oh, I don't know. It's very cute. I also forgot, um, I'll just take them off, but I have, <laughs> these are thrifted too. 
they're, because you know I'm at home and I'm I'm comfy. But these are my Little Mermaid slipper booty slippers. So yes, and those are adorable. They're so comfy. I definitely have. I maybe I should put them on with this a pair of uh, thrifted slippers that uh, yep. I've been getting a lot of use out of since since we've. It been is kind of the fun part of it that the fact that you know anything goes right now. You can live in your jammies all day, you know, or you can decide to put on an evening gown and have dinner if you want to. You know, it's it's whatever. <laughs> Never floats your boat. That is an adorable dress though, and it fits you so well. It does. It fits me like so a glove, cool. which is definitely harder for me to find. Cause I'm I mean, I'm not like huge, but I'm not an extra small either. And it's so much easier to find teeny tiny vintage clothes. Oh, the yeah, because they run so much smaller, exactly. Yeah. When I found this on the rack, I saw it and I was like, I knew I was gonna buy it no matter what. And I figured it's probably not gonna fit. I'll sell mm -hmm. it, but it fit perfectly. So Definitely one of my favorite dresses. Very cool. And now our thrifted home decor of the week. And I'm super excited to hear about what's behind you, Nay. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> so I have a, this is a Where's Waldo sheet. You can see a little bit more of it there. It's a, yeah, that's just, it's, it's a full size sheet. I actually have two of them there. You can see a little more. Yeah, it's fun. So I just put that up as my backdrop today. I am probably going to sell them, especially now is a good time. We'll talk about that, that people are buying fabrics and, you know, yeah. they can repurpose that this would be a great mask, you know, but it's my backdrop for today. And then I also have this guy who I thrifted. Gosh, I don't know how much I spent for him. Maybe like $5 a while ago. He's he's just ceramic. I mean, he's not like, I think he was like probably originally like from Marshall's. Oh, there's the Goodwill tags on the bottom. <laughs> $5.99 for him. Off and figure out where it's from. So. How funny is that? Yeah. So th that's the hallmark of a true thrifter when when the Goodwill tag is still. Yes. So I paid three uh, $131,2019. I paid. I'm 99 for this guy, but he sits on my, on my one dresser just because I, uh, I love giraffes as much as I love golden girls. <laughs> so, so that's my home decor item. And I also am drinking out of my lovely breast cancer mug today that had a lid at some point, which it probably should right now because I'll probably spill, but um, <laughs> all, for some reason, all the mug lids in my house disappear. So <laughs> I, I think that's, pretty pretty normal <laughs> i think i have one mug that has a lid and magically it's still the straws has. and the lids always are yeah mia but yeah that's a cute mug though and it still works without the lids but. yeah i have i can find the lid somewhere but it you know hopefully i won't be spilling anything so. good morning ed i see brenda in the chat we have a couple hi everyone thanks for tuning in yes so this year was supposed to be my 10-year college reunion. Oh, gosh, gosh, you're so much younger than me. Well, okay, I graduated a few years late, so I was an old graduate. Well, what was I, 24 when I graduated, so not that young. But it was supposed to be my 10-year college reunion, and, of course, it's canceled. So I went online, and I watched the commencement speech from my graduation, mm -hmm. and um, the speaker is Rachel Maddow. And she talked. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> and it was weird. I developed a new a new love for Rachel Maddow. Yeah. Yes. It was really weird realizing that ten years ago, she's like about ten years older than me, a couple like twelve years older than me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, she's a little older than you, I think. But okay. so like watching her ten years ago was basically watching her at my age now. Yeah. And I feel very unaccomplished. But anyway. So in her speech, she talked about Carrie Nation, who is who was a um, very active uh, uh, prohibition supporter. And she would go around and she had an axe and she would smash bottles of liquor with her axe. Oh and she sold these axes, they're like wrought iron axes as a sort of fundraiser for her cause. Oh my so, gosh. It says cut out the whiskey 1901 
the axe of all nations which is obviously like a pun on her name and that's her face so this is an original one it's not this is an original one yeah wow where on earth did you get that well so in the speech rachel says you can find them on ebay so i found it on ebay <laughs> find anything on ebay oh that's so cool yeah and uh and so now it lives on our bar cart with our bourbon what a cool story that is, that is, it's kind of funny to picture her going around smashing bottles like right that's and then the cool thing too was the person who sold this to me was it from lexington kentucky so obviously probably also a bourbon person which might be why they owned it yeah so i thought that was cool too because it's like connecting yeah and it's kind of yeah. ironic that now like bourbon collectors would you know something yeah like, right now it's ironic like, smashing yeah. bottles of <laughs> yeah that's funny i'm not a prohibitionist i'm very very fond of whiskey so that's why i think it's funny anyway yeah that's kind yeah, of that was a really fun find and it's also like sentimental and it was cool to actually get it on ebay so yeah very cool okay so now we can get into our main segment today. Yes. So different ways that we as resellers can help items people are looking for, items we might have on hand that we could donate, things like that. And Nadine, you wanna you wanna take it away? Sure. So our first our first um our first set of tips is how can you help during this pandemic? So this is it's very tragic. I mean, you know, we're we're trying to put a happy face on today and all because you know you have to go on and do your best but it is it is sad i mean i've had friends that uh, one of my one of my breast cancer sisters just lost her her um her young early 30s sister to this you know um and you know just seeing the stories that it's so sad so you know you might feel helpless because you're you know you're quarantined and if you're not an essential worker then you're you're ho stuck at home and you might feel like what can you really do to help you know because you see you know you see on the news what's going on and you see the, the healthcare workers who are in need the people that are are losing family members and whatnot people stuck in nursing homes you know people that can't be with their families so you might feel a little frustrated but there are ways you can help especially as not only as a reseller but as a thrifter too so <clears throat> the first the first way that you can help is a lot of us have have profit piles or you know um, stashes. Even if you're not a reseller and you're a thrift or an avid thrifter, you probably have items like that. So um, you can use the thrifted materials in your stash to make masks or donate some fabric buttons because um, nurses need the headbands yeah. now and they they're using the buttons to fasten because your ears get. Okay, there you go. These so they're good size. I found these in the bins ages ago and I never use buttons, but I really liked them. So uh, unfortunately I don't have more than these. I'm they're perfect though, the big buttons like that. Yeah. But another idea I had was digging through some of the items that I was kind of ready to donate that aren't selling, or just I realized have a flaw and and I wasn't going to end up listing and seeing if there are buttons on the clothing. So that's something else you could do. And of course, even if you don't make the, uh, what are they called? Like the mask tie backs. I think we have a photo of them, right? Maybe not. Um, yeah. That you can pass them along to somebody who does. And so this is one thing that's needed are these sort of larger like one inch buttons. Yeah, and, so, yeah so that's that's a great, so if, if you, um, yeah, so what you can do is donate those. If you're not handy yourself, donate them to somebody who is and mm -hmm. they can make them the masks or the hand headbands and or if you're not if you are handy you can dig those items out of your stash like Lola is and make it yourself. So some of the things that crafters need right now uh, and this is me speaking both as a thrifter and a crafter. So Cotton fabric is a big one. Anything that you know is is sort of quilting cotton is good. You can also use some uh, you know depending on what your what you have in your stash. You could maybe repurpose sheets or clothing. You do have to be careful with anything that's not new. So you know uh, you have to wash it and dry it on high heat, preferably even boil it 
And then the, the thinner cotton is probably not going to be the best, although a lot of people are doing different things to reinforce and add filters. So depending on how people are making masks, they might need slightly different supplies. So I'm trying to give sort of a broad idea of what you might find in your stash to donate or to use to make masks yourself. Thread. I know I felt like an idiot when I realized I had just went online and did an order of some of the supplies I needed and totally forgot I needed more thread. So that's something that, you know, people are using faster than usual right now if they're making a ton of masks. So if you have some sewing thread, then elastic. So this is about the right size. It's like a quarter inch. I believe this is, that's what this mm -hmm. is. And it's sold out just everywhere. You can't get it on Joanne or fabric.com or per, like any, um, I looked on mood, like all the, the usual sewing stores are totally out of this. So this or the sort of like skinny, um, almost more like shoelace type mm -hmm. um, elastic is being used for behind the ears. So I actually have a mask example that has, um, so this was one of my early prototypes that came out kind of big, but so, you know, that's for this style mask. And then, can you hold that flat, like out, like, okay, yeah. Inside. Yeah, do you put, now, oh, is there a pocket, there's a pocket for a filter in it? This one does not have a pocket for a filter. It has another item which is in demand right now, which is a layer of feasible interfacing to add okay. that. Yeah. So then the idea is instead of replacing the filter, you would actually boil this and wash it on high heat to sterilize it. Okay. So this would this would not be medical grade. This is for like going to the grocery store. Now, if you were to hand wash it and throw a little color safe bleach in it, would that also disinfect or? Um, I, from what I understand, and and probably we should have said this. But we are not medical professionals. Right. Exactly. Do not take anything we say as medical advice. I've been spending a lot of time trying to research the best practices for using and making these masks, but everything is changing all the time. So, you know, keep an eye out for if there's you know more updated information and guidance from actual medical professional people. What I have heard is that the most important thing is just heat. So literally like sticking it in a stock pot and boiling it, it's probably like the safest thing you can do, okay. but then washing it on high and drying it on high in your wash, regular washer dryer is the next best thing. Okay. Interesting. So I, my friend, my friend Stacy Faraci, who is a friend of, she's a great friend of mine. She's awesome because she's making, she's been fiercely making these masks and she's also making the headbands for the nurses. And she has, um, she's been, um, she, she, she's been um, using, you can use thrifted fabric. She's been using fabric uh, from hers that she's been using from Joann's and scraps that she has. But uh, she also puts a filter in the middle of the mask. And she has also resorted to cutting up fitted sheets for the elastic she mentioned. So that's another idea. And here is, an, here is um, an example of a mask that she made and sent to me. That's so cute. Yeah, it's super cute. It's Hello Kitty fabric. And it fits, you know, just fits my ears here. And but there you go. And it's perfect. And I wear this whenever, and I have washed it and it came out great. Um, I wear this to go to the post office, you know, if I, if I have to go out anywhere, I really haven't been going many places, but I'll wear this. I also do wear it when I go over to my parents or I have to hand them something, you know, up on their porch, I stand six feet away, but still if I'm six feet away and talking to them, I'll put this over, over my face just in case, you know, just like as an added layer of safety. But yeah, so she's been making these masks like crazy and she is, she's, she's an angel because She's been, you know, just working so hard at it. And she does have, you know, she has a child and she's got other things going on and she's been putting so much effort into these. So very cool. Fun. Yeah. So. so Brenda has a great tip and I actually have a question for you, Brenda. So she is using one inch wide strips cut from t-shirts for the straps on the masks. Um, okay. I I had, by complete coincidence, I had started making t-shirt yarn before this all have the mask making frenzy began. And 
I found that it tended to have a lot of sort of like little bits of like frayed t-shirt fabric that came came off of it. Am I doing something wrong? Do you have are you having this problem? Because I have tons of this t-shirt fabric and I don't know if I need to maybe just like sew it shut or something um, because that would be a great, and, and of course everyone has t-shirts. Like even if you're, you don't have a profit pile to pull them from. You yeah, exactly, them there, exactly. Yeah, in your closet. So let me know, Brenda. Um, other other possibilities that people are using for the straps. And there's another style that I guess neither of us have an example of, but instead of having the ear elastics, they have the straps that tie behind your head, which mm -hmm. you've probably seen by now. So uh, bias tape is one thing that you can use for that. Twill tape, which is just cotton sort of ribbon, but it's, yeah. it's made a little bit differently. So it's easier to tie. A lot of ribbons will sort of like slip out over time. So that's easier to wear. So if you have any of these items and even probably more that we haven't mentioned that people are getting creative and using, you know, any sewing, any sewing items. So it like sewing machine parts or I'm trying to think what else. Uh, one thing that I'm using a lot of are like the sewing clips instead of the pins because the pins add extra holes and you're trying to minimize as many holes in the fabric as you can. So, you know, anything that you might have listed or have waited to list, you could either list now or donate to someone who's making masks or use them to make masks yourself. Yes, definitely. So, yeah, so uh, let's see, this is either Craig or Rick. I, but they, let's see, Craig and Rick say, they, they have a cuff, cuff ribbon, big 30 inch round stretch fabric. Could that help make a mask? So anything that's a knit fabric as opposed to a woven fabric is not great for masks. But what uh, Tiana said in the chat as a reply is uh, actually a great tip. So they would make headbands. So that's another thing people are making with the buttons is a headband that then you attach the elastic to a button like this instead of having to put it around your ears because mm -hmm healthcare workers are wearing them all day and getting sores behind their ears. So that's a great idea. Yeah. Yes. So. Okay, so Brenda says, I cut with the bottom of the shirt crosswise and it rolls up. I think my problem might've been that I wasn't cutting on the grain carefully enough. Okay. So that might be my problem. Yeah, I can't, I can't really do Which is a sewing thing, so if you're not a sewer. Exactly, yeah. well I. Oh, and it's, I hi Craig. Thanks for tuning in. Yes. So, okay, so our next thing, so did you wanna show, do you have any other samples to show, Lola? Yeah, so this is this is my other one. It doesn't have elastic through it yet. Um, mm -hmm. This is a pattern that I found. This one's from the Washington Post. I actually don't recommend it. It took me a lot of trial and error to get it to work appropriately. Uh, and this is one that I'm keeping for my own use, but it does fit. It does fit fairly well. I had to finagle it quite a bit, but this is another example. Of, so I used a vintage uh, napkin that I had, and then the inside was a chambray shirt that mm -hmm. I- was oh, a good repurposed idea, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had originally bought it to sell, and then I realized it had really bad stains under the armpit, so it was perfect oh, for this. Great, great tip there, yeah. And then, has interfacing. Um, and then, so the other thing I heard about this pattern afterwards is that it does, it does require like quilting, which makes it look really nice, mm -hmm. but all of the extra holes are going to like lower the efficacy of the mask. Oh, that's a good point, yeah. So, so you know, this is just a, an early one that mm -hmm. I may, you know, end up using myself in a pinch, but it's probably not the best. Mm -hmm. So I do have a, Google Doc I'm working on that has notes and all the different patterns and which ones seem to be working better and which ones are reviewed better. And I will add that in our description. So if anyone's watching this and wants to use uh, some of their thrifted materials to make masks, you have some resources for that. So speaking of my friend oh. Stacy, that, oh. is, is, that is Stacy. So she <laughs> has brain or bias. I would think bias would give less fraying. Maybe I was 
to be honest, I was being really sloppy with it and was cutting more on the bias, I think, though. I'll have to think about this and I will get back to you. Um, Nadine, maybe you can put us in touch and we can do some. Oh, more. yeah. Yes, I can yeah. definitely do that. She's she is an avid sewer like you. So, yes. Yeah, well, you know, sewing, as you might already know, if you watch the show on a regular basis, knitting is my primary craft. Sewing is something I've been doing since yeah. I was a kid, but not nearly as often. So I definitely feel a little rusty, but mostly it's like riding a bicycle. So she's, she's very, um, she's crafty like you, but she also knows her fashion. So. Oh, that is awesome. you guys would actually definitely get along. <laughs> okay. And Brenda has another great idea, cutting up an aluminum can for the nose piece. So that's actually another thing that would be good to mention if you happen to have laying around is uh, I've read 16 gauge wire is the best wire for making a nose piece, which I did not do on these masks. Okay. Some people have used twist ties like for, you know, closing bread or something as the wire so there's a lot of different things people are, are kind of working with for that the aluminum can is an awesome idea if you don't have anything else that's like brilliant but if you do have the wire people are looking for that as well somebody wants to say hi hi, hi. how are you this is this is Declan okay so, all right. So then our next thing is if you happen, yeah. So if you happen to have any essential items that you've thrifted, like extra hand sanitizer, wipes, et cetera, whatever you have, you know, see who you can donate them for. And most importantly, PPE, like N95 masks. Um, there's some home renovation projects that you might have some or have thrifted some gloves that you bought, you know, to go to the bins, maybe surgical gowns. Maybe you found one. <clears throat> the Halloween goods, you know, maybe at this at the Halloween section or something and graduation gowns are even being collected to use in a pinch. So see what your local hos hospitals may need. And that's where I have that that photo that you were going to bring up, Lola, there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is an example of one of my local friends whose husband is an ER doctor and he was saying that in the, in their hospital, they need those surgical caps that, that there's patterns on that. So she was asking if anyone can sew those, they need those at the hospital. And also there on the right is an idea, her, her daughters actually got going, making inspirational t-shirts for the hospital employees. So just, just to kind of brighten up their day, you know, so. Yeah. So so, they turn, turn the t-shirts into bags, right? So they can use it for their like lunch or I don't know what. Like, oh, was that? Yeah, like, I guess that. Yes, t-shirt bags. You're right. Yep. Cool, yeah. Carry their belongings in them. Yep. 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 So t-shirt bags. So, yeah. So that's a cool idea too. So there's all kinds of things that you can do, and <clears throat> yeah. So just see what your f local Facebook groups are a good source. Many states and regions have a group dedicated to making masks, and also local websites are helping connect makers with people who need them. So you might be able to find a Facebook group. Yeah. So a couple of examples of this are in, so in Massachusetts, there's a group called Masks for Massachusetts, which was a, a way that I found some of the original patterns they started trying, as well as they have a large list of all of the hospitals in the state that are looking for masks uh, to be donated. <laughs> Can you hear my cat? <laughs> What's wrong? So there's also a website in Philly that is listing all of the places in Philadelphia that are looking for masks. So you might have somewhere like this in your area, in your region. And, a, you know, so a good way to find that is to ask on a local Facebook group or see if there is a mass group. They'll probably have a link to it. So social media is a great way to get connected to what the needs are in your area. And it is, I think, a good idea to try and keep everything local because it's, you know, 
important to get things in people's hands as fast as possible and also to not tax the postal system more than it needs to be right now. And there's definitely a need near you. So, you know, it's just a matter of kind of connecting to the right people. Okay, great. He does not like dogs, so I'm not going to read this comment. Oh, out that in case my you. dog is here too. I have a kid and a dog. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I wonder if Paddington will hear, or Yaz will hear Paddington and get I don't know. Okay, Paddington. I have not had great luck dressing Yaz up with anything, so. But, you know, that would be kind of cute. It's a PSA. Put a mask on my cat. He does have asthma, so I'm really worried about all of the uh, conflicting news reports that cats can get COVID because he is technically yeah. also high risk, so. What I do hope is that people aren't dumping their pets at shelters because of that news. That's one of the sad things that might happen. Let's hope not. But <clears throat> so also if you can, you can donate craft items and yarn to nursing homes. So the people there right now can't have visitors and they're stressed. So you can help alleviate some of their stress. So see if, you know, check their websites first to see if they're accepting donations, don't add additional stress on the workers if they're already stretched thin, but that might be an avenue to pursue too. So, and you can also donate thrifted scarves to people who don't have masks or give them to friends and family. And remember that these are last resorts. They're not as effective, effective as even the homemade cloth masks. But if, you know, it, the, if it went in a pinch, you can still do that. So, yeah. and then if you need to shop online, uh, shop from small businesses like other eBay online sellers, uh, Poshmark, Depop, and Etsy sellers, and maybe purchase masks from an Etsy seller. Or if you're looking for sneakers for your kids or health or beauty items, whatever that you need right now, buy from your fellow small business sellers. So, yeah. And then um, we also want to talk about the fact that you, where if you are going to make masks and you are going to sell them, which is okay, that Etsy is probably the best site. Poshmark is not allowing that. I, I just reviewed some Poshmark listings right now and yesterday, and I saw that they're being flagged, that you can't even, you know, you can't, you can't sell the, the handmade masks on Poshmark. And eBay, it's kind of iffy because we'll show you, um, we have, we have later, we'll show you their policy, but they have, um, they are not able to, sorry about that. Um, there, but you can't like use certain keywords might, might get your post flags. So you have to be careful. So I think Etsy is probably the best place to sell them if you're going to sell them. And also, um, what else while cleaning out, set aside some items to donate for a time when you're able to donate. So then you can donate them to a charitable thrift store or shelters. So yeah. So Lola, you said that you saw a headline about that. Yeah, I saw this was in, it was a regional area, so it's not necessarily coast to coast, but I did see a news article that said Goodwill's really worried that people will be taking this time to clear out their stuff, which I'm sure a lot of people are, but then it's because they can't donate it to Goodwill or another thrift store right away, they're just throwing things out. And the caution was to say to people, please, please, please hold on to your stuff because we do want it, we will want it when things open again, and we don't wanna have no donations when we reopen. So I know all of us are probably also kind of looking forward to that moment when they reopen, because hopefully there will be extra donations from everyone cleaning out their stuff while they're you know at home. But that I think is a you know good tip. Like if you are tempted, just remember you want the stores to be full, so. So my friend Stacy says that the teacher bag idea is genius. Her hubby is the frontline worker. Thank you to your husband. And we have just been leaving things in a bucket outside. I'm going to pull some teas I have listed. So great. Yes. And she also says, be very careful selling kids masks. There are major restrictions on that. So good to know. Yeah, that makes sense. So one thing that Etsy is doing, which is why I think that they are the best platform for this right now, is they moved really fast to accommodate people who are selling masks. And they have a, a website or a page on their website that, that talks about how the tips for selling handmade masks on Etsy. And one thing it says is that they actually will automatically put a disclaimer on your listing 
saying this is not medical equipment. It is not proven to prevent any illness. So that will happen without anything, anything that you do on your part. And I wonder if that's why I'd say like on Poshmark, because they can't implement something like that to cover themselves legally, they don't want to risk selling the masks. And that definitely was something that I thought of. Um, I, what my plan is, is to make masks and sell them on Etsy in order to cover the su- cost of supplies so I can make more to donate. And, you know, I think a lot of other people are doing that. I'm sure on Etsy, you can find a lot of sellers who are doing it just to cover their own costs and and be able to donate as many masks as possible. But, you know, I would be heartbroken if I sell one and someone gets sick anyway, and then thinks it's my fault. So that definitely scared me. So it actually was sort of a relief to see that this is something Etsy's taking very seriously. And they also have some great tips on this page about how to not burn out as a seller of, of these, you know, items that are in urgent need. So I thought that was really nice of them and very thoughtful. Yeah, um, going back to too, that uh, Goodwill was, uh, you, you said you saw a headline that Goodwill is worried that people are gonna throw mm-hmm. away things that they're donating right now. Yeah. So, yeah, so <laughs> I saw, I saw, I actually saw recently, I, th- I forget where it was, but they showed a picture <laughs> of a, th- sorry about that. They showed a picture of a thrift store somewhere, and it was just piles and piles on the outside. And the the thrift store was pleading with people to stop doing that because all that stuff is just going to sit out in the rain, and it's just going to—it's like throwing it in the trash. So yeah, so definitely save your stuff for a time when you can donate, or if you know if you can donate stuff to maybe you have an elderly neighbor or something, you know, make sure that you know everything gets disinfected and whatnot. But. Um, you know, and also the other thing, our last point in this topic is to think of other essential workers who may need masks and like grocery store workers, mass transit workers. Sadly, a friend of mine, her brother was a, as a, was a scepter worker in Philadelphia and he passed away this past week because of coronavirus, because, you know, he didn't have the proper protection. They weren't, I don't want to speak on you know, behalf. I don't want to slam SEPTA, but, you know, apparently there were more than what there was. He was not the only worker who, who passed away this past week. And it's really sad. He left behind a young son and, you know, he was young. So, you know, so, you know, check out and see what other workers, you know, might need these masks. Maybe you can help other essential workers too. You had mentioned parks too. Was a- yeah. I saw a call uh, in Philly for the the parks uh, commission was looking for masks for their workers because they're still out, you know, keeping the parks running for people who are able to get outside. So right. there's a lot of need for these masks that you might not expect. There's also, you know, in my town, which is where I'm planning to donate some masks, there's a group that does a lot of uh, homeless outreach and works with low income people for health care. So they're looking for masks for their patients and people that they help. And there's, you know, lots of places besides your local hospital, but your local hospital may also be looking for mass donations. So our next, our next topic that we're going to discuss is how you can ease your own stress and the stress of your family. So, yeah, so it's important to take care of yourself too. Mm -hmm. And you know, these are just, just some ideas of what you can do. So one idea is to search your thrifted stash for items that can help. And one idea is, you know, like I had, for example, I found in my profit pile and I've been cleaning out a lot, you know, since, you know, I have a little bit of more time and I found bath bombs, adult coloring books, board games, yarn, stuff like that. And I had some stuffed animals that I gave to my kids instead of selling them. And that made them happy in this difficult time. Um, some neighborhoods are doing things um, like putting, yeah, so this is, this is, you want to talk about that, Lola? Yeah, so in my parents' neighborhood, they're doing the teddy bear thing where different people are putting teddy bears in windows and then when the kids are walking around, mm-hmm. they can like kind of go on a hunt and find all the teddy bears. So if you have a teddy bear that you were, you know, listing or in your profit pile, that might be a way to participate. And I know in Philly, they're also doing rainbows all around the yeah. city. So 
people are kind of uh, doing sidewalk chalk rainbows or they're drawing it, putting it up on their window. So if you have maybe yeah. sidewalk chalk or you know, paints, things like that, you could use that to add to the rainbows if that's in your area. So yeah, there's lots of different little ways that you can you can get involved in sort of supporting your local community and and maybe also give yourself sort of a relaxing activity if you're doing something art related. So yeah, that's that's a great that's a great point. And our neighborhood actually, I just found this out yesterday that our neighborhood is actually doing this too. We're doing a, it's called a stuffed animal safari hunt. Mm. And for, during spring break, the school district actually is, is uh, start, started it. And during spring break, you're supposed to put a stuffed animal in your window and then print out a sign that you're one of the stuffed animal safari friendly houses or whatever. And you're supposed to, so I have to do that later. And you have to put giraffes in your window. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's kind of a fun idea. And then, also, um, yeah, so, so that is, a, that's, so I'm sure, you know, everybody's got stuffed animals in your stash somewhere. Maybe you can even donate them for that purpose too. So, and then. Yeah. And it's Brenda, it's funny that you just said this in the chat because that was our next item that we wanted to talk about was looking online to purchase. So if you do, um, want to look for, you know, self-care items or, puzzles and things like that, you know, definitely if, if there's something you don't have in your profit pile and you're buying it to support other resellers and, and to, to think about supporting our community like that. It's such a great idea. Definitely. All right. I am dealing with a kid and a dog in the room right now. So. Uh, uh, you want me to keep talking and you can take it. No, it's fine. It's fine. We're, we're good. Um, I'm hopefully, you know, I'm just, we're good. It's okay. Yeah. And then also, now is the time to find a new hobby that might be soothing for you. So if you have a cross stitch kit, which is, you know, one bolo that's discussed fairly often, or you have yarn, you have needles, you have all the supplies to try something new. I bought a small table loom that I have been on the fence about using or selling for a while, and I am definitely going to finally pull that out and learn how to use it. And thank God for YouTube because it is the best way really to learn how to do all of these different kind of relaxing hobbies and you don't have to leave your house to do it. So that is another fantastic way to put some of those items that you've bought and are still in your stash or profit pile to good use. Yes. Like I've been, I've taken up, I'm trying I'm gonna to keep, I keep ripping out and starting over, but I'm determined to make a scarf to knit a scarf during this. So I've, you know, I've taken some yarn out of my stash to start knitting. So yeah. So, <clears throat> so definitely, you know, those are definitely some things that you can do. And also, don't, you know, like, don't focus on just the news 24 seven, do some of these things to kind of distract yourself, keep yourself mm -hmm. busy. Um, you know, for the sake of you have kids for their sake too. you know, keep, you know, you got to keep your sanity, keep your mental health, you know, so these are, these are ways that you can be kind to yourself and your family. And if you need a break, it's okay to do nothing one day too. Yeah. <laughs> so. And I also think it's important to Tell yourself it's okay to do things badly because yeah. no one's expecting you to like create an artistic masterpiece. If you are learning how to knit and your knitting looks awful, that's fine. Like this, this is a time when all of those things—it's the act of doing it that can be soothing. And you know, there's studies that show that it helps your mental well-being. So it can just be something for yourself, and no one else ever has to see it whether that's, you know, you're learning to paint and your painting is terrible or whatever. Don't, you know, don't think that it has to be good. It can be bad and it can still be something that is nourishing for you. So I think that's always true, but yeah, yeah absolutely. And our next, our next uh, topic of discussion is how can you take this time to improve your business? So, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this next week in our show, we're going to talk about ideas for sourcing, but uh, as, so as we discussed last week, you can use this time to work on tackling your profit pile, improve on listings and photos, organizing your inventory, set up, item, uh, set aside items you want to donate. 
um, as per above. And um, your sales might slow down, you know, but this is also a time to prep, uh, you know, when for when they come back and, and think positively right now. And, you know, for a while, people are going to be shopping online more than ever. So they're also in quarantine. They have more time to shop online. So look at it that way. And <clears throat> perhaps, you know, they're not buying as much, but a lot of people are still shopping, which is evident in, you know, some of my sales. I'm surprised at some of the things I've sold. And I stopped listing for a few days and sales slowed. So keep listing. You know, this is, you know, don't get discouraged because you can get into kind of a vicious, vicious cycle there and say, well, things aren't going to sell now. So what's the point of listing? And then you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot because you're not listing. So then things aren't selling. And, you know, so things will still, you know, list and list, 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 list. Now is the time. Even if things don't sell, you know, you're listing, you're building up your inven your stores and your inventory for, um, for when things do sell, you know, so, and lists on multiple platforms for a greater chance of sales. So learn a new platform. You want to learn a new platform. Now is the time I'd like to start listing on Etsy. I haven't yet. I do have an Etsy account, but you know, so now is the time to do that, you know, use this downtime for that. So, yeah. So one thing I wanted to talk about is I actually decided that at least for about two weeks or so, but we'll see, I put my stores like on vacation mode because I really want to focus on selling masks and making masks. And I'm worried that if I also have other, you know, items that I'm selling to worry about shipping and stuff that I might just get overwhelmed. And I also really want to finally do something which I've wanted to do for I'm well over a year now because, you know, ever since I got sick and I realized that I just have to strategize to be able to keep on top of things better is to do like a full inventory and create a huge one well, huge like based on how much energy I do have because I want to be realistic about that but uh to create a queue of of things to list and have everything ready you know have the description have the images have everything ready to go so all I have to do is basically copy and paste it from like a Google Doc and hit post and that I can have consistent listings every day, even if I'm feeling lousy. I can just from bed, you know, copy and paste everything. So uh, that's I think this is the perfect time for me to do that. And I'm especially excited about doing a full inventory of everything I have. I think that's something that for my mental health, just to know exactly what is listed, what's not listed is going to help a lot and let me feel less frustrated and overwhelmed with my business, which, you know, I love doing this. I don't want to feel any negative emotions towards it. So that's sort of my goal. Yeah. And that's fine. If you need, if you need to take a break and put your, your store and, or your, mm -hmm. you know, I'm taking the other approach where I'm using it as a time to, cause I, I do need, and also, you know, financially I kind of need to keep going, you know, but yeah. you can, if you are able to take a break, you know, and you, or if you need it for your mental health, that's fine too. You know, use your time for other things like Lola is right now. And you can still ramp up your business while, you know, like Lola mm -hmm. is right now. So, yeah. yeah. So and, and so sort of the flip side for, um, for me and my family, like my spouse still, still has a great job right now, but, and hopefully that will continue, but we don't know everything the future holds. So I sort of want to be ready to ramp up things if need be uh, and and knock on wood that's not an issue but yeah. I think now is the time to be proactive and sort of think ahead and try to anticipate what what the worst case scenario is so that we're ready for it right and you don't have to keep your I mean if you need to in a pinch like let's say god forbid you know Chris loses their job no I'm not trying to you know but you know who knows no, I don't want to even like put it out into the universe but I also don't want to pretend like it's not yeah, like yeah, but it is a reality things can happen yeah. right now so god forbid something like that happens then you can in a pinch turn back on your you know your posh closet and your eBay yeah. store and start ramping up your selling so it's right. and and if that happens I also want to be on top of like my numbers I want to know yeah. what my potential sales are and if those numbers aren't going to you know cover our expenses then yeah. i need to figure out how we can do that so i i don't want to be shocked by anything and i definitely need to get a better grip on all of those things and that seems like now is the time to do that so definitely i agree so yeah so 
<clears throat> so those are some ideas. And then, so now our, our, our another thing is um, know what's trending on different platforms right now. And we're running, <clears throat> we might run a little over today, but um, that's okay. So what's trending on different platforms right now? So as we discussed last week, use this time to work on tackling your profit pile, improving listings and photos, organizing your inventory, and set aside items that you want to donate as per, um, oh, we, sorry, I'm going back to her. <laughs> I'm reading the wrong thing. Sorry, everybody. Oh my gosh. So, okay. Um, I will skip ahead. So yeah. there are definitely things that are selling more than others, but everything is selling. And in the chat, Ed had a great example of a Christmas nativity scene that just sold this morning. So it, that actually is a, like the perfect example for what we want to talk about. Yeah, that's a great segment. Not only is it something that is out of season, it's something that I would think nobody right now is thinking about buying. But who knows? Maybe there's a collector who their form of self-care is browsing eBay and looking for that, you know, holy grail that they don't have or someone who's trying to think about uh, maybe by Christmas time, we'll be able to see our friends and family again in person. And like, that's their way of, yeah. of feeling a little bit better right now. So, yeah. And there might be essential workers right now, like even nurses and doctors who are not in danger of losing their job because they're very needed. And this might be like a way to de-stress, you know, to, to do some shopping online mm -hmm. and, you know, so so still list everything, which is what exactly what Ed just said. And uh, Craig said that they're selling all sorts of non-essentials right now too. So yeah, so definitely keep listing everything, but you can prioritize certain items. And so follow eBay for business on Facebook. That's a great information. It's a great, a lot of great info there about things that are selling updates that you need to be aware of. Follow Poshmark on Instagram, all, you know, so be on, be on top of what's selling. And Jordan Sweetnam, who is the Senior Vice President of American Markets on eBay, has a great eBay tr um, list of trending items. There's a website. Now, this is a blog. It's an eBay community blog on the, and he has listed all kinds of things that seem to be trending during this pandemic. So definitely check that out. We can put, we can, we can stick the link in the, in the chat or in the notes later, but. Yeah. And. So one thing here that's mentioned is hair color. And that just made me think of another thing to do, which is uh, keep keep up with your friends and family on social media and see what they're up to, because that might give you some ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's um, another, yeah, that's, that's true. And another thing, we just bought a wall clipper set because my boy's hair was like growing like ridiculous. They all look, and they can't get haircuts any, anytime soon. Yeah. So. yeah. We just did a do-it-yourself haircut for the boys, you know. So that that was a purchase that we made mm -hmm. online. And, and I know they're purchasing nail stuff and hair because they can't go and get their their beauty items, you know. So yeah, or they've always wanted to dye their hair green and they couldn't because of their office, you know, policies. Which now no, it's all out the window. And so I know a bunch of people who have been posting on Facebook saying, "I just dyed my hair the color I always dreamed of, which is like pink or blue." Yeah. Or now's the time you know you're yeah. stuck in your house nobody's really seeing you so and yes jason just said that he just sold a hundred dollar cd last night soundtrack to the cosmos yeah so people are buying like all kinds of stuff because they're stuck in their houses and you know they want to make their experience better you know that make it a little more bearable so they're buying movies and cds and stuff like that so you said that fabric masks were the number one trending items on etsy so this is also a good place to list mask supplies if you're hoping to get them in the hands of people who are making masks, right? Yeah. yeah. So there's definitely, I think on on Etsy, they've always tried to kind of cultivate this sort of community feel where everyone, you know, it's Etsy sellers buy from other Etsy sellers and you're always, just like we do in the reselling community, but this is maybe more yeah. the handmade community. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great way to connect with people who are making masks and are looking for more supplies. Cause like I'm running out of things all the time so many stores that are the, the more like big box stores are out of all of these supplies right and you can also then be able to offer people a good deal if they message you and say i'm i'd like this fabric to make masks would you take you know a lower price right. and you can say yes if, if that's something you want to do i think there's nothing wrong with offering these items at a fair price yeah no no price gouging like that goes for everything yeah, well, we'll and we'll talk about that. Yeah, a bit. but you know, 
yeah. people are happy to pay a fair amount for their materials and they're expecting to yeah, be definitely. you don't have to feel like you have to donate everything yeah. that you have yeah um stacy says truth i dyed my hair a few weeks ago <laughs> <laughs> and um so stacy i tried says, to yeah. and it was completely sold out so like if you yeah. have some sort of you know hair care thinking about listing it like it is hard to find these things right now because everybody is on the same page about it. I just bought a big jug of conditioner online mm -hmm. because, you know, I can't get to the store and I, I'm going to need like this. I bought the big, huge. And, and uh, Jason said he just sold a paint by numbers. And here's what the buyer said to me in a message. Thank you. Glad to have something to do during this horrible stay at home time. That's that's great. Yeah. And I love hearing, you know, I've, I've heard some nice things from my buyers, too. You know, recently, I've had, people seem to be a little more friendly. We talked about that last yeah, time. For sure. Um, so <clears throat> our last, uh, or no, actually, this is our second last thing that we're going to talk about is here are some of the items that we can suggest to list right now. So craft items, yarn, fabric, embroidery, and cross stitch kits, humidifiers and humidifier filters. I actually oddly had some in the old, in our, in the old house when I was moving out. I had a humidifier filters brand new in the box and I sold one of Mercari and I'm gonna I haven't listed the other two yet but I bet they'll sell like hotcakes right now uh, pajamas and loungewear puzzles board games art supplies my dog is whining in the background <laughs> yeah art supplies books and anything really goes and things that I wouldn't have we wouldn't have thought would sell have are still selling so here are some items that I have sold recently and I'm as I was going through these this isn't everything I've sold I've sold more a lot of clothing and a lot of shoes too, oddly. But I noticed some trends that, that you know, in my group together, my sales during this pandemic, and I noticed some trends that, you know, so swimwear is one. On the left, that was just an, a Target brand exhilaration swim top, $12, you know, but hey, on Poshmark, mm -hmm. I sold the middle one was a plus sized um, swimsuit. And on the right, I sold that that Target bit new with tag, $64.99. Somebody bought a, a swimsuit for uh, during this pandemic. Yeah, so I wonder if this is people who are trying to think ahead to better times and looking forward to the summer. And so that sort of makes sense, but I'm definitely surprised. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And then again, thinking towards the summer, I think that that is people are thinking about in their minds, like getting out in the sun and getting through this. So I sold a Tal that Talbot straw that shoulder bag, I got that at the bins. So I paid like, and I sold it for $20, took a best offer. In the middle there, I, I and I, I had uh, I consulted Jason on the pricing and all. Uh, that's a vintage a, a Hawaiian cabana suit. And so I cool. sold it for $149.99 in the middle of a pandemic. I mean, really. And then the those Nike golf shorts on the top I just sold this week, they were new with tags. I had best offer on it. They didn't even make me an offer. They just bought it for $32 full price plus shipping. On the top right, there's a, a summery Lily Pulitzer skirt that I just sold on Poshmark. And on the bottom right, there's another pair of shorts. So you're seeing, you know, a lot of a lot of summery kind of items. This is what I've yeah, I've been saying. So and then fabric. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I have a whole sack of fabric. I'm not going to go through it all because we're running on time here. But I have a whole fabric, a whole stack of fabric here that I'm about to list. And I guarantee that it will all sell, sell fast because oh, that's what's awesome. been happening. I've been listing fabric. It's been selling like, you know, so those that's just some of the fabric sales I've had in the past couple of weeks. So Yeah, and this is all on eBay, right? So you could also. Uh, those are all on eBay, yes, yes. On Etsy and see how that goes. Yeah, in fact, I might be, brand, you know, I'm thinking about branching out to Etsy. So maybe this would be a good, a good time. time to, you know, to start to get through this stack of fabric. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so fabric, definitely. If you have any fabric lying around now, is, if, if you're not going to donate it, you know, don't, first check and see if. You know, if you can't make your own mask, somebody needs it or, you know, but but you can by all means sell it right now, too. So and I am taking lower offers than usual because I know that that some people are probably using it for mask making. So like the um, the cotton fabric on the top, she actually messaged me and said that she's making it for people that uh, for her her. Um, uh, her roommate is an essential worker. She didn't say what, but she's making it for his work. And so I gave her, you know, I, I took her, I took her offer, you know, so yeah. And yeah, so yeah, Stacy says that she needs to put her Etsy fabric on eBay. 
So I, I from Etsy, Etsy, that, yeah, she doesn't put enough on into Etsy. Yeah. 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 Etsy definitely is a different, a slightly different skill set. And in terms of listing, you know, and using, they use, I think tags are much more important. So I feel like there is a little bit of a learning curve, but. And uh, I've definitely seen a bunch of people making masks with like sports team logos and stuff as sort of a way to, you know, especially because everyone's missing sports right now and people are also trying to feel connected to their communities. Yeah. So I think those are really popular for masks. I definitely list that if you have any. I haven't listed that Seminoles fabric. Oh yes, I guess I did list that. I did get I did get an offer on this. I now this is there's a quite a bit here. There's mm -hmm. there's like a couple yards here, and somebody did like really really lowball me. So I sent them back a little bit of a higher offer, but and they declined it. So but I couldn't like it was like really like it was like five dollars or something, and I couldn't I couldn't do that. But so okay, so yeah, so what else? Um, <clears throat> Did, do, oh yeah. So I have some other things. That I've, yeah. yeah. So the other thing is clothing, shoes, and accessories have been selling. So I've been selling, you know, those boots. I've been selling a ton of shoes, women's clothing. You know, I sold a men's Ralph Lauren shirt. You know, I sold that scarf. I sold the, that Tory Burch bag. So these are items that people, you know, these are kind of like non-essential items, you know, right now. I mean, but people are still buying them. So. Yep, and then craft kits. And I have to thank Henry, because Henry did purchase some craft kits from me recently. Oh. And so, yeah, but th these are an example to the, of the craft kits that I've sold recently. So, you know. Yeah, so also ones you might not expect, like rug hooking is mm -hmm. one that I've, a craft I've seen more people talk about lately than I have in the past few years. I think it might be coming back a little bit, but definitely wouldn't be the like top bolo I would expect. So that's really cool. Yeah. And then health and beauty items. I sold the hair slashes yeah. in the middle of a pandemic. I sold that physician's formula, uh, whatever it was that I got for, I think I, it was brand new, but I got it for like 99 cents at the thrift store. And then that shower gel, that bath and body works that I found in my mom's, uh, linen closet a long time ago. And I finally got it to listing it and it sold for $15, you know, so people are buying health and beauty items too. So yeah, Brenda has a good point about the uh, sports fabric masks that they can be uh, removed for copyright infringement if you're selling them. So that would be a good fabric to prioritize donating. Um, but that's definitely what I've seen so far is a lot of those for, you know, local, um, like local donation groups that are, mm -hmm. that are posting images of them. So. And is that my last? Oh, okay. Household items. Yeah. Ice cube tray sold on Poshmark. I, I took an offer of $7. I only made like what, four bucks on it or something, but whatever, you know, at least it, I paid like nothing for it. So, but people are want, somebody wanted, you know, fun cactus ice cube in their, in their cocktails, you know, during the sun. <laughs> and then I sold that Maramec over target tray, you know, so things are definitely selling, you know, home items. People are stuck at mm -hmm. home. So, yeah. I definitely have been trying to, make my home a more like tranquil and kind of inviting place right now. I think it's really important for our mental well being, And I'm not surprised that that's something other people are thinking as well. And oh, so that was your last one. Uh, so I think because we are running a little bit late, jump. Yeah, we were going to talk a little bit about what not to do. Um, yeah. And eBay does have it. We can pop, mm -hmm. pop the link, but eBay does have an announcement. Basically, don't don't price gouge, sell prohibited items, things like that. So yeah, I think I think that it's mostly self-explanatory. Yeah, it is like, really so. Hold and rule kind of thing, like do unto others. Exactly. So we don't really have to go into it, but, but if you're interested, you know, search on eBay, they do have a, a, a COVID-19 message. So, and, and so this week we wanted to, we talked a little bit about the post office um, before, but I did want to draw attention to the fact that there are a lot of um, postal workers who are getting sick right now because they are on the front lines and, you know, they're not, medical professionals, but they're still an essential service. And um, so here's a, a, 
an article from the Boston Globe, uh, which is my local large newspaper about um, postal workers falling ill and says that uh, 427 postal workers have tested positive for COVID-19. So, I mean, obviously there's not a whole lot we can do, but just to to sort of be conscientious about the fact that they these are the people helping our businesses keep running. And I know Nadine, you mentioned, I think was a really good idea if you have extra maybe sanitary wipes or little bottles of hand sanitizer that you don't need to leave them out for your postal workers if they yeah, might. Yeah, even if you have like the little trial sizes. Yeah. You know, maybe, you know, put put them out in your, maybe put them in your mailbox with a little note attached to your mailbox and for your postal worker. So I wish I had extra supplies like that because I, um, I live right across the street and I'd love to just bring, but I might, you know, I might just bring them something, a treat or something one day, you know, just because they're, right. they're working so hard, you know. And, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Are you there? You're still there. Okay. Yeah, I meant to mute myself and instead I removed myself, but <laughs> dog is barking out. Yeah. So, if any of you also have other ideas of how we can kind of spoil our postal workers and just show our appreciation and recognize what risk they're taking to keep our businesses trucking along, um, yeah, let us know or you know comment after this video or share it in the chat. But I'm definitely trying to keep keep that in mind right now. Yeah, definitely. So, and yeah, thank you to our postal workers. Yeah, as Ed said, yes, thank you very much to all the postal workers and, and all of our essential workers. Market report. So, okay, yeah. this is all you, Nate, because my okay. are. Yeah, that's fine. And these are just some, some other things that I sold that are kind of surprising, actually. So, <clears throat> the first one is. I sold these fancy jeweled sh shoes that, you know, they had this crazy bling to them. Beverly Feldman, Beverly, it's, um, it's a, I think it's a Beverly Hills, California actually uh, is where they're based. But I found these in the bins. I think I was with you, Lola. And I, so I paid one for a pound. I took a best offer for $33. Now I had these up for like 60. So I took almost a half, but I am taking, like I said, reasonable lower offers right now. I'm taking them because I need the sales. I know people are, you know, times are tough. So, you know, mm -hmm. so also, you know, take, take, you know, you might want to consider that too, you know, take some, some offers that you maybe wouldn't usually, but I still, you know, that was still a decent profit, $33 plus shipping. And, you know, Maybe maybe they're thinking of uh you know down the road when they have a wedding or something you know to attend or who knows or to get dressed up at home or something. Yeah. So uh, I sold those this week and then I sold this has been listed forever for a while actually and I sold it for full asking price thirty nine dollars plus shipping a vintage nineties Lisa Frank binder so somebody I mean in the middle pandemic they buy they bought a yeah. They bought a Lisa Frank binder. So, you know, really, like Craig said, everything, you know, things are, all kinds of things are selling. So, and yeah. also that's such a great binder. Isn't it adorable? I've, yeah. I've never found one at the thrift store. And that's still one thing that I would love to come across someday. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a decent price. You know, I took $39 for it plus shipping. And and thank you to frontline workers, healthcare, and yeah, all. Definitely. Definitely. And uh, my last one was a uh, bonus unexpected bolo. So somebody, yeah, so I had this, actually somebody had given me this and it was, uh, 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 it was brand new, but it, you know, in the bag and it was actually, when I went to clean out my storage unit, uh, when last time I was able to get there in Philly, few weeks back, I brought this home and I listed it and someone bought it during the pandemic, probably, you know, it was a little cheaper than, you know, than Amazon or whatever. And they can't get out to a store right now to get one. So mm -hmm. somebody needed a, a, a orthopedic boot and I sold it for $48 plus shipping. And I could see where this is an item that you might still be able to go to that store. Like it might count as essential, but mm -hmm. if you can save yourself a trip and not have to go out in public by buying something online, then. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that is our show for today. We do have a question for you as always. And that is, what have you sold recently? So if you have seen any trends like Nada that surprised you, let us know in the comments and we would love to know about them. We can, we can talk about them next week when we come back to sourcing and creative ways to source. 
when there is no thrifting to be had. So you can find us all over the internet. Um, like I said, my stories are on hiatus, but uh, still on Instagram. You can email us if you have any ideas or feedback or comments. And you know, always, always love to hear from everyone. And then our uh, next week is going to be 10 creative sourcing ideas. So we are really excited to talk about that and really get creative about how to keep moving our businesses forward. And if you have any um, anything that's working for you too, come ready and, and chat about it with us. So we are excited to see you again next week. Yes, everybody stay safe and healthy and have Absolutely. a good week. And yeah, so we'll see you next week, same mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And thank you. And oh, thank you. Thank you, Anne Marie. Yeah. Yeah. Wish everyone, everyone really good health and, and, um, oh, and happy, happy Easter and happy Passover to those. Yes. That too, yes. It does not feel like that. It's so weird this week. It feels totally different. But I know we are making dinner and bringing it on Easter and bringing it over to my parents and dropping it mm -hmm. on their porch because they can't come to Easter dinner with us this year. We usually have my aunt and uncle and my parents. And so we're, I'm going to be dropping dinner off for them. So yeah, but well, that's such a nice thing to do. It is a weird time. It definitely is. So everybody, you know, have a great holiday, stay safe, and we will see you next week. Bye. All right. Bye. Thank you.